Hello. All right. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? My name is Vaichitso. Thank you for asking. My name is Vaichitso. It's part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for. I apologize. My delay uh, took a little bit longer. No problem. I was tuning in. I learned a lot. It's important to have awesome. a good relationship. Awesome. 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 So let's dive into it. Thinking Grow Rich. When did you get started? And I want to ask, how much pressure does a model go through uh, in their life? So I got a lot of questions. Sure, sure. You know, um, I'm always interested in figuring out new ways to improve myself. Uh, obviously, we only have one life uh, that we know of. And so it's important to make the very uh, most of it. And um, I've always been, you know, a big reader and just honored to be here. I, I would say I'm like a full-blown model. I do a lot of lifestyle work, you know, in commercials and TV hosting. So just the, you know, I guess buttoned up equivalent of shaking what your mama gave you. Right. I had the education. I had the opportunity. Why not? Why not? Awesome. Is it, is it hard to be a host? Because you have to watch out what you say. You got to say the right things. I mean, it's not that, you know, it's not, uh, it's not like a live Instagram where you kind of, you know, you could just go with the flow. It's people have the expectation of what the show is all about or what you're talking about or who you're interviewing. How does that work? Because a lot of people don't know how difficult that is. It's actually doing very similar work to what you do. You're a facilitator. You ask great questions and you get your guests to open up. And with most of the projects I work on, it's really not about me. It's about inserting an emotional connection to make something engaging. That's really what it turns down, what, what it comes down to. So it, for instance, if we're going into um, a winery, having a host take the viewer through the winery adds that emotional component of awe, of excitement that you wouldn't otherwise get with just shots of an empty room with lots of wine in it. So, you know, the, the brains that we have are thousands and thousands of years of wiring and we are social creatures. So TV hosts and radio, radio hosts and DJs and Instagram live hosts, we kind of take advantage of that, that human connection and just make an experience that much more engaging for mediums like this on video. And I love it. I, I'm kind of like you, very naturally curious and just always interested in learning new things and taking viewers along on that journey. We tell stories and that's how people connect. I love asking questions. I, I, I'm just interested in what their responses are because I already have a predisposition of what I think is the right thing is and the right answer or the right thought. But then when I hear them talk, I'm like, okay, cool. And, and keep in mind, I never learn by agreeing with somebody. The only way I learn new things is by disagreeing with people. When you agree, you don't learn anymore. But when I'm asking provoking questions, now they're like, okay, we got to an answer and let me go back and forth. We still love each other, but sometimes we don't agree and there's totally fine. So I know. That's a, to me, it's to that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a gift that, that God has given us that we could actually have these intellectual conversations and, and be able to be okay at the end of it. Right, right. It's the gift of curiosity. And I think it's also the gift of recognizing logic versus emotion because there are some controversial areas that really become both, like politics. People right. really identify strongly with their political beliefs. It is who they are. But politics, there, there are facts involved. People actually did or did not do things. Certain policy actually is written in some way or it isn't. So that's where I, I'm with you. Like, I tend to agree on things just to be able to... I tend to agree when I'm learning something new. But when I'm really understanding the 360, vibe, five, the 360 view, like, you have to play devil's advocate to really understand how something can be challenged. So I, I, you're totally right. I saw a picture that you had on the Golden Gate, if I'm not mistaken. It was a huge red bridge. Why were you on it? I'm a, a native of San Francisco. Have you ever been out here? Oh, I love San Francisco. My wife loves San Francisco. It was actually the first trip that we ever took together six, seven years ago. She's going to chop me later on for not having the exact date and the exact weekend that we went there. But it was six, seven years ago. I still remember. I don't remember the exact. I know I drove the whole time. I know I drove the whole way. Um, so that, that, I, I, I know that point. <laughs> I went through some pain and suffering. That's, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. But listen, my question is this. 
for individuals that are in your field, how important is self-development? Why do you have to read book and reinvent yourself or improve yourself? Why is that important? It is the most important thing ever. I mean, professional development is the only way you increase your chances of getting to where you want to be sooner. That's really what it is. We all have goals. For some people, it's financial. For some people, it's personal. For some people, it's just, I want my LinkedIn to look a certain way. But professional development, networking, you don't know what you don't know. It's almost like you're a kid learning to ride a bicycle, right? And when you're riding that bicycle, you're like, man, this is so amazing. I've never gone so fast in my life. I could never run this fast. But wait until that kid gets into a car and rolls down that passenger window and really feels the wind in his face, right? Like a kid who's riding a bicycle who's never been in a car and who's never seen a car will never know. So what you don't know is what you don't know. And there's a whole world of possibility for every single person. It doesn't matter what your job is, whether you're a TV host, an independent contractor, um, a student. Um, you can even be a retiree who's wanting to learn how to play golf. There's a whole world of skills and a whole world of experiences out there. You just don't know what you don't know. The only way to know what you don't know yet is to learn and to develop yourself, to meet people who are going to show you a different thing. So I, I think it requires a fair amount of humility and a fair amount of patience to recognize that you don't know everything, but that you could become better. That's the only obligation I'd say we have to ourselves as people. You just want to be a better person than you were yesterday. As long as you, as long as you sincerely invest in your own growth and, and want to be better, you will. You just have to take action too. It's not just sitting there thinking, oh, I want to, I want to get off the couch tomorrow. Like you just have to do it. So, so are you doing modeling at the moment or are you a TV host? So what is it specifically that you do right now? Yes. I want to ask you I want to know who's, who is the most intriguing person that you interviewed or you encountered. And I want to know what you learned from that interaction. Just to give a quick background, I uh, started off doing beauty pageants. So I was first runner up to Miss America and uh, former Miss California. And that experience was really interesting. They asked me an onstage question that I'd never heard of. Um, it was politically charged. They just wanted to see how smart I was. That's generally how those things work. <laughs> um, hold on, hold on, hold on. What was the question? The question was, well, at the time, the dictator of Syria had been found using deadly sarin gas on women and children, committing murder to his people. The question was, Miss California, should the United States intervene? <laughs> like, this is not a light, fluffy question, <laughs> right? It's not the, the kind of question that you want to get. I don't even know how to answer that. I wouldn't know how to. I mean, I know what, to, what I would answer, but I don't think, I don't know. Some people may not like my answer. That's the know. thing. You, you have to show that you have an opinion, right? because it's a question, you have to answer it. And so I ended up answering the question, by the way, you're only given 30 seconds. And when you're on stage, there's this big number, right? It's going 20, 19, 18, 17, and a big bell will ring if you go over time, which is kind of a no-no. So I had to somehow come up with an answer while keeping it under 30 seconds. Um, that was diplomatic, but also just like well, what short. Was so my short was, I think you know, the United States is the most powerful country on earth. And with that power comes the responsibility to do something. But the president has to work with Congress to arrive at a, at a decision to intervene. So it's not, like, it's not like it's like, yes, we should go save the women and children. These are violations of human rights. I kind of basically came up with an answer that was, you know, politically correct. <laughs> That is so politically correct. It's I, so, but well, that's a pageant. I'm on TV. I have to answer it. I can't just be like, no, I do let him die. I do. <laughs> um, but the woman who, who won ended up getting a question like, like, what is beauty to you? Or something very, very fluffy and very, I'd say, easy to answer. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not a big fan of her. I, I I understand. It's cool. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> she won. It's cool. But throughout this journey, who was the most interesting person that you met? 
Oh, interesting. You know, I had a chance to interview a gentleman named Naval Ravikant, and he's based here in San Francisco. He basically is a blockchain investor. And I found him fascinating because there are people who we know are smart and who you know read books and are generally just easy to talk to. They can, they can convey technical information in easy to understand ways. But when I interviewed Naval, he was talking about ways of seeing the world and the vision for the future in a way that I had never heard anyone describe it. I mean, it was like he was someone who had an ability to see the world for what it could be using fundamental shifts in technology, fundamental shifts in policy. It, it made me feel optimistic for the future. And it, it, I can't really give you like a, a very specific example. It was kind of just a feeling of being in the presence of a renaissance thinker and that's something i think that we are missing if we look at the renaissance we had the michelangelos we had the leonardo da vinci's we had the voltaire's i mean these are philosophers who were also scientists who were also astronomers who were also chemists who were also doctors and nowadays it's like our society really tries to define people by one thing you are you know you're a doctor okay you're a physician you're, that's what you do. Um, oh, you're a businessman? Okay, money, 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 money. But I would love to see a world where people can kind of be leaders across multiple fields because our world is a multidimensional place. People can be more than one thing. People are living longer. The cost of education might be going up if, you're, if you go by traditional channels, but the cost of learning is going down with mm-hmm. online courses, with books, with YouTube. So talking to Naval just in- inspired me and made me feel like our children and our children's children will once again be able to maybe s- save the world the way that the Renaissance thinkers were able to with, with the amazing art, with, with amazing progress in medicine and in, in building materials and construction uh, and health. Like, we really need that. We've got 8 billion people. It's time to put some pressure on this next generation to figure out a way to sustain our next 8 billion people with the same resources. Because we, we haven't discovered any new planets. The Earth is, is a finite planet, from what I know. This, this home, you know, this one strange rock that we're on. But with more and more people... The only solution is to figure out how can we feed more people with the, with the existing land that we have, the existing animals that we have, with the existing medicine that we have. So, I mean, technology and innovation, like this is a must if humankind is going to continue surviving. I agree with that 100%. Did mm-hmm. you save that interview? Yes, it's actually on, um, it's on YouTube. I can share the link with you later. It was a blockchain-oriented interview. But he, ta- he really talked about some great things. Uh, but I do agree. The cost of education, the formal education has gone up. It's out of control. Somebody, I don't know if the president needs to do something. Um, I don't know if he's asked to do anything. But, you know, if there's one thing that he needs to do, he needs to, he needs to do something about that. But I do agree with you. The cost of learning through other channels, other methods. I mean, everything that I know from Instagram, I learned on YouTube and in mastermind groups. And everything that I know about social media, I learned over there. So there wasn't any school. And I don't know of any schools that are actually teaching these updated materials today. I think all these professors, all these teachers, all of these mentors that, you know, previously you were looking up to, I think they're kind of obsolete now. I don't think they got it. I don't think they got it together. I don't think they're learning as fast as things are changing. Um, to be able to teach other individuals or students and give them that creativity to be able to do that. So there is a big disconnect. That's why I see a lot of people go on courses, YouTube. I mean, I learned so much different things. Somebody asked me the other day, and they asked, well, you know, Vahid, you, you have grown Instagram accounts. You're, you're very, very pro at it. You're learning. And I'm all like, listen, uh, it costs you money because there are courses that you got to pay for. There are mastermind groups you got to pay for. There is also the cost of time you put in. But I was like, literally, if you sum it down, is about 600 to 700 YouTube videos. That's all it is. So do you want to get that in two months? Do you want to get that in six months? Do you want to learn that in one year? It's totally up to you. But the information and the content 
and the way to do it is out there already. You just got to seek for it. You just got to have that burning desire to go learn. So yeah, I, I, agree. I totally, totally. I, I, you know, I'd say going to traditional school is only worth it for the network. For, for skills, right? For skills and for, for, you know, occupation and for, you're right. Like, professors are, are academics nowadays. Like, they're, they're not going to be able to teach you something as practical as what you can learn online now. Because the people who are actually doing it are the ones making courses. So, um, yeah, and student loans are just crazy. I just I saw a commenter, you know, yeah, yeah. Student loans are, are out, are off the roof, and they aren't teaching what's really needed. You're, it's just it's like one big racket, right? Like, ah, all this debt, not being able to pay it off, not having the skills, able to, to, to start paying off loans right away. Or if you do, it's just, it's like, it's going to take you 10 years. It's ridiculous. You, you'd have to figure out a different way. And, and there's no guarantee that if you pay that money or go through that schooling when you get out, that job is there, where you are able to do the nine to five and be able to repay it back. I don't have a problem with you getting a job. It's totally cool. I think entrepreneurship is much cooler and much more work, but you get more kick out of it. Potential for higher income is definitely there. But if you're going to go do that and don't make enough money to repay back the loans, I mean, it's like a mortgage without the house. Yep, exactly. It's, it's, it's crazy. You owe two, three hundred thousand dollars. That's what it is. So me and my wife, we fight all the time about the schooling and everything else. She's an attorney. She believes in that route. I don't believe in that route. Um, I, I believe in whatever you can learn and be able to do. So we're going to find a happy medium because uh, she runs the household. So I didn't it in, I have to submit. It's a dictatorship. It's not a democracy. So right. I got to submit to that. But, you know, I, I put my you know two cents into it as much as I can. Well, she's an attorney, right? And attorneys, they their jobs are predicated on existing systems. So she had to go to law school. She had to go get in. She had to go work in a law firm. She chose that path, and as a result, everyone in everyone who's chosen that path is incentivized to keep those structures in place. And it is important. Like the legal structure is not going anywhere. I'm glad the legal system exists because it keeps us all safe, and it has its place. But for other people who don't thrive in that environment and who never wanted to go to law school, maybe they can't afford to go to law school, there's a lot of opportunity in business. It's scrappier, right? But it's just different. It's exactly like you said. It's paying a mortgage without the house. You just have to hope the house is there with That's anything that requires graduate school. I agree with that. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time and being with us. Hopefully, we get to do more. Maybe next time you you be on the bridge and we do a live session. Let's so everybody do it. Globally, everybody could see the, the the bridge. Is it cost a lot of money to just keep crossing over there? It it, it gets you costly, right? You can walk right? for free. You can walk for free, and then if you want oh, to drive across it, yeah, you only can walk when for free. you drive. But isn't it long? Like, it's not that bad. It? Yeah, people walk it all the time. Mm -hmm. Really. You can definitely walk we're it. Living, we're spoiled. We drive everywhere. We want to go to sh you know sh the mall down the street. We take our cars, so we're a little bit spoiled. But I definitely want to see the scenery, and then we'll show a lot of people because we have a lot of audiences that potentially will never be able to go to San Francisco, and for many many different reasons. Uh, so definitely that will be cool. So I'll have my team reach out to you and set that up. Hopefully, whenever you get time, whenever you have a chance, that will be something cool that we could do. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here.